how to hear a scream in space. In 1979, the sci-fi horror masterpiece Alien introduced what is arguably the most famous tagline in all of movie history. In space, no one can hear you scream. But is this always true? Is there really no place in space where someone could hear you about to be face hugged? Like the life cycle of the xenomorph itself, sound in space is a bit more complicated than that. It's the one science fiction fact that everyone back on Earth knows, and the first thing that nerds watching a movie or show or playing a game will complain about. There is no sound in space. If you hear a ship exploding or blasters firing or someone talking out in the cosmic abyss, something has to be wrong. Some sci-fi stories stick to soundless space scenes more than others, explicitly because of worries about scientific accuracy. However, despite the tagline we've all memorized by now, sound can and does exist in space, and there are ways to hear it if you get creative. First, what is sound? Well, for our purposes, sound is best described as a mechanical wave. That is to say, a wave that travels via the highly technical process of stuff bumping into other stuff. In other words, sound needs a medium like the air of my spaceship to travel through. Atoms and molecules have to bump into each other to make areas of thick and thin that our ears will feel as pressure waves and our brains will eventually interpret as sound. In contrast, light is an electromagnetic wave, not a mechanical wave, meaning that it can travel through complete nothingness. Thank you, Science Tron 42069. It plays a lot of Fortnite. Because sound is a mechanical wave that needs stuff to travel through, what the sound will sound like, like its wavelength and frequency, will depend heavily on the properties of that stuff, the speed of sound in that stuff, the temperature, the density, etc. Now, most importantly, when we say in space no one can hear you scream, what kind of space are we talking about? A simple interpretation of in space would just be anything outside of Earth's atmosphere. I'm adrift in my spaceship in space right now, but my ship is pressurized with normal Earth-like air like the International Space Station is because I'm human probably. Therefore, any screams occurring on my spaceship, I would be able to hear, oh just face. like I would on Earth. Jeez, oh. I'm coming. Now I know what you're thinking. Screaming on a spaceship is just kind of playing with semantics. You're inside. Fine, let's go outside. Out here, on a spacewalk, my spacesuit, like my spaceship, is pressurized. So at the very least, I would be able to hear myself scream if something was about to use me for pharyngeal jonser size. And if I was in space, I could still hear someone scream on a spaceship if I got creative. All I would have to do is press my helmet up against the hull. If someone was screaming bloody murder inside of the spaceship, as you would if something was bursting out of your chest and killing you, then in theory, some of the vibrations from that sound could make it to the hull, vibrate it, vibrate my helmet, vibrate the air molecules inside of my helmet, and then make it to my ears as sound. Surmise flight labor? What? Screaming in space is a very broad statement, so what if we were screaming on the surface of another planet or moon? What would that sound like? This is where it gets interesting. Remember when we said that the properties of a sound would change if the medium that sound was traveling through changed? Well, that's exactly what would happen in an alien atmosphere. For example, the atmosphere of Mars is very thin and cold and full of carbon dioxide. This results in a speed of sound through the Martian atmosphere that is a full 30% less than the speed of sound in typical Earth air. We know from this equation that if you are changing the speed of sound but keeping something like the wavelength the same, the frequency also has to go down if the speed of sound is going down. And so, on Earth, you sound like this, but on Mars, you would actually sound like this, with your voice being much, much lower in frequency. And because of all the carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere, it would absorb your sound waves very well. So a big scream just from a few meters away would sound very, very quiet, but still audible. The atmosphere of the very scientifically tantalizing moon of Saturn, Titan, is thick. It's thicker than Earth's atmosphere, but it is very, very cold on the surface of Titan, like negative 180 degrees Celsius cold. And so the speed of sound on Titan is even lower than it is on Mars, which means, you guessed it, 
you would sound something like this, like you inhaled the opposite of helium and pretty dang cool. And the Titanian atmosphere doesn't have the same sound loss problem as the Martian atmosphere, and so sound carries pretty well. If you were to scream on the surface of Titan, it would sound almost like it does on Earth. Screaming on a planet like Venus would be a bit weirder. The Venusian atmosphere is 90 times thicker than the Earth's atmosphere, and the air is so hot that it could cook a pizza in the open air in just a few minutes. The air molecules are closer together and moving a little bit more energetically, and that would lead you to believe that the speed of sound on Venus is higher than the speed of sound on Earth. And you'd be right. The speed of sound on Venus is 20% higher than it is on Earth, which would make your scream on Venus sound like a chipmunk was being murdered. <clears throat> Except scientists like Timothy Layton and Andy Petculescu have discovered and calculated that the Venusian atmosphere is so thick that your vocal cords would actually vibrate differently if you were screaming through it. And so instead of your scream sounding like a chipmunk being murdered, your scream would actually sound lower and deeper than in any atmosphere we've considered so far. Like Mars, though, the atmosphere of Venus would be very good at absorbing sound energy, and so a full scream might be completely inaudible just 10 meters or 30 feet away. My point is, is that in the right conditions, I would still be audible. You can still hear me! If by in space we mean any place outside of Earth, then there are definitely situations where someone could hear you scream, and there is still sound. If we're being fair to the quote, I think most people interpret it to mean that if you were all alone floating in the vacuum of space, then no one would be able to hear you scream. We could be pedantic again here and say that if anyone was listening into your comms like you are to mine right now, then someone would be able to hear you scream. And if you got desperate, another person floating all alone in the vacuum of space would be able to hear you if you simply touched your helmets together to get the vibrations like we did with the ship's hull, like a tin can telephone. What I think most people actually mean when they say in space no one can hear you scream it's that sound cannot travel in space and that's the complicated part like I just took off my help <laughs> revived by math we squishy humans can hear sounds in the frequency range between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Using the speed of sound in typical Earth air, that means the range of wavelengths that we can hear is somewhere between 1.7 centimeters and 17 meters. For a sound to be a sound, the average distance between the atoms, molecules, and particles that are transmitting that sound wave have to be shorter than the wavelength of that sound, or else that sound cannot transmit itself through the medium. And that is the problem with space. Space is the closest thing to empty that we know of, but it's not, strictly speaking, totally empty. There are a few atoms per cubic meter of void in space. In our own solar system, this leads to an average interaction distance of 10,000 kilometers, longer than the Earth is wide. This would lead to a wavelength that is way, way longer than even the longest wavelength sounds that we could possibly hear, and so no. A human screaming naked to the void in space cannot be heard in the same way that you are hearing me right now. All of this does not mean, though, that sound cannot travel in space. It does. In 2003, scientists using NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory observed a black hole screaming. Looking into a gas cloud surrounding a black hole 250 million light years away, they observed ripples in that gas cloud that looked an awful lot like the ripples you'd see from sound waves, except these wavelengths were 32,000 light years long, about a third as long as the Milky Way is wide. The lowest frequency sound you've ever heard oscillated once every 20th of a second. The bass note that this black hole was in effect pumping out oscillated once every 10 million years. This is a B flat around 57 octaves below middle C for you musically inclined and is, as far as we know, the deepest note ever played on the cosmic stage. Now, you or I cannot hear notes anything like this deep, 
But because we observed it in some sense of the word, we heard a black hole scream. Ah, great Ridley Scott, those things are fast. So there is sound in space, and in most situations we can imagine, there is some way for someone to hear you scream, aside from you being totally naked to the void, and in that case, it doesn't really matter, does it? And think back to the first Alien film. In every single scene of that film, even though everyone is in space, the entire time, if anyone were to scream, someone would be able to hear them somehow. And that's where the tagline comes from. I know that we are being pedantic here, but I think this kind of over-analysis can be very rewarding because with science, everyone can evaluate a scene. Give me that Venus voice. Because science! <laughs> okay, so just to recap what your voice sounds like on different planets, this is Earth. And this is Mars. And this is Venus. And this is Titan. And this is Earth, Mars, and Venus, and Titan. This is how you sound of different planets. Earth. Ooh, Mars. Ooh. Titan. Ooh. And this is Venus. Okay. So, just to recap. 